Hi, this is Michael Edwards, Assistant Professor of Medicine at UC Denver, specializing in bioinformatics. Uh, this is part two of the David tutorial. This is done in conjunction with the AACR 23rd Annual Workshop uh, held in Snowmass, Colorado in 2014. Um, so in the first video tutorial, the David tutorial, well, what I basically taught you was how to import your data list or gene list into David. So in the second part, what we're going to do is look at how can we explore this list at the gene level. And we're going to use these tools down below here. Uh, first tool I'd like to present to you is this gene ID conversion tool. And I use this quite a bit. So what this does, and I'm going to click on it, what it does is it allows us to take any identifier uh, related to a gene and turn it into any of the identifiers given here. So if we wanted to take our gene list and find the homologs in the fly base, we could click on this link. For this example, what I'm going to do is look at genes or turning this list into Affymetrix IDs. And Affymetrix is a gene chip company. So I can select this here, Affymetrix, and I can hit Submit to Conversion Tool. So now what this does is give us a list of our genes and its associated Affymetrix ID on various chips uh, that this company produces. We can download this file, and you'll notice this with most of the gene lists we produce, is that you can always download the file here. So it'd be easy to take your identifiers and turn it into something else. Again, this is very useful in bio bioinformatics because many different sites take different identifiers. And it's, it's very nice to have a tool that allow you to convert those very easily. Given here is a summary table. Uh, it was able to convert six, 651 of our IDs. Um, and it was not able to convert 12. 12 were ambiguous, and these are listed here. Again, this is a very useful tool, uh, not only for exploring your gene list, but for uh, using it to take your gene list to uh, make it applicable to other data sets. Uh, so we are back to our original page. If you ever want to get to your original analysis page, you just go to this link here, Start Analysis, and click on it. This takes us to our original analysis wizard. So I showed you the gene ID conversion tool. Let's look at gene name batch viewer. So what this tool will do is give you all of your genes and provide you links to more information on them. We can click on here. This is listed alphabetically. What I'm going to do is click on this first gene. So it'll give you its chromosome, its location, its ensemble ID, uh, various links to functions. So this will link to the actual manuscript where it talks about the function uh, given in this box. We can look at related genes. So are there any other genes on your list that share similar biological functional groups with this one? So I can click on here. And as it shows, there's only one molecule that passes the criteria. And you can play with these options here on this window here, options. We can click on this. This is the similarity score. So this is kind of how many the, the criteria or the, uh, the commonality between these two genes. Um, you can kind of think of it as uh, almost as correlation. It's a scale from 0 to 1. So the higher this number the more related these genes are. Uh, and overlap over here is just how many functional categories must be shared between these genes before it's considered related. As you can see down below, there was only one gene that passed all this criteria. This is the CD109 molecule. And it has a kappa score of 0.53, which is fairly high. And you can do this on all of your genes, so that if you had a gene you were very interested in, you could look on your list to find genes that share similar biological functions. Again, we go back to start analysis. And the last tool I'd like to talk about is a gene functional classification tool. So what this will do is now take your genes and group them based on shared biological functions, go terms, uh, protein domains, you name it. We'll click on here, Gene Functional Classification Tool. 
So these are the genes that our original list of genes, 660 IDs. And an easy way to manipulate the criteria for this, this grouping is this classification stringency. Right now it's set on medium. Let's set it on high. Right now at medium stringency, there's 25 clusters. Let's see what happens when we make the uh, criteria a little more strict. We can rerun this. And now you can see there's 17 clusters of the, that the software put these genes in based on related biological processes. And we'll go through and I'll, I'll show you uh, where you can find that information on, on how these genes were grouped. This is a list. We've got 17 clusters. This is our first group. Uh, up here is the enrichment score. So this is basically how many times uh, more enrichment would we expect by random chance. So given just a random list of genes, we're getting this gene list at almost 11 times more than what we'd expect uh, based on random chance. Just like the uh, gene batch tool, we can look at related genes of all these, and these are given here. We can look at some of the uh, path or the functional groups that were associated with this. We're just going to click this T. So in this particular cluster, there were 64 IDs that David grouped them together based on shared biological processes. Uh, these are the processes that it's, it used to, to group, uh, group these genes. So this first category uh, is extracellular. Do, do these genes transcribe an extracellular protein? Again, related. you can do the related groups, genes in groups. So these are Oops, sorry. We can click on to see what genes are the extracellular proteins within this particular cluster, and these are given here. There's 58 of them. We can look at the count. So there's 58 out of 64 in this particular cluster, which makes 90% of these genes in this cluster are extracellular. We can look here at the p-value, so this is the odds that we would get all of these genes associated with this particular biological term based on random chance. And you can tell that the, the chance is extremely low. And again, we've got the fold en enrichment, so this particular biological class is enriched 6.3 folds over r just random noise. And then again, these are, the, or these are the genes that are not in this group. So we can click on that and, and find the genes that are not extracellular proteins in our original list. Oops. And again, you can download any of these files at any time based on this icon here. And the last one I'd like to show you, so this is the kind of interactive part of this uh, program. So what this is doing now is it's using Java, Java to give you a 2D view of this clustering. Yes, I want this website to take over my computer and run the program. So given here, so all of the genes in our particular cluster this cluster are given below here. These are all the gene names in our cluster. These are the biological terms that the software used to group them. So if there's a green box corresponding to the gene, that means it had that particular uh, go term. And you can see here that all of these genes share all of in the green share all of these biological terms here. If it's black, that means it is missing that particular go term. Again, you can just visually, you can see how, how much these genes are related based on these particular uh, biological conditions. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can save this image. We can, oops. We can alter its visually, we go horizontal. 
So now all the genes in this particular cluster are listed here. And all the biological terms are given below. And you can highlight these, you can delete them. You can almost make your own particular clusters based on what things you want these genes to share. And so this is kind of a, a great way to, to make your own clusters and not having to rely on um, what the experts say. And to get back to our original analysis page, we just hit Start Analysis. And that completes our look at our gene list uh, at a gene level. Our next tutorial is now going to look at these functional tools. So now instead of looking at grouping them by genes, we're going to group them based on shared biological uh, pathways and, and, and functions. And so part three will be looking at these functional tools. Thank you very much.